Hi guys, Retro Django here. Now, all my videos doesn't have to be with powerful Amigas. An Amiga 500 is a nice Amiga also. I really like the Amiga 500. So many nostalgic memories. Love everything about it. Now, today we're gonna take a look at this beautiful Amiga 500. It is uh, a gift. <laughs> from a subscriber of mine. He actually lives uh, pretty close to me. Uh, Mikael, Michael, <laughs> Mikael here in Denmark. So this is actually his friend's Amiga 500 that he had uh, and he couldn't fix, fix this one. And he got help from another guy, he couldn't fix it. And then Mikael, Michael tried to fix this. And um, as he says, nothing happens when he turns it on. So it ended up with just a dead Amiga that they were about to throw out. And he asked me, can you use some parts? And I said, yes. And he actually um, gave this one to me. I offered him money uh, and he said, no, just, just take it. Because three people have tried to revive this and it's just dead. And... Uh, he just hoped that I could use it as parts machine. Now, the thing is, on my channel, I hate to part these Amigas in thousand pieces. And some people sell, you know, on eBay, the chips and stuff like that. Nothing like that is gonna happen here. One thing only, and that is to save these Amigas, repair them, uh, if I can, you know, I, I, it's just, it's just a hobby for me, but it's a hobby filled with love. So let's just go ahead and see what's going on because he says when they turn it on, it doesn't give a sync. So I'm just going to give it some, now, before you turn one of these on, you have to check everything. Okay. When you buy one of these, open it up and check out everything before you turn it on. So. We're not just gonna power the, uh, put it on and, and power it up, okay? So, as you can see here, uh, no screws, no nothing. <laughs> so, it, uh, I just got it like this. The keyboard was actually laying like this, and I got it in a bag. <laughs> so, yeah, as you can see, not in the best condition, but I'm always thankful every time I get a donation on my uh, YouTube channel. I'm always happy so he said take the parts you can use throw the rest of it out but I'm gonna see if I can repair this one and he said if I can repair it then his friend will buy it back for the time I have used on it <laughs> weird stuff man but the thing is I'm just gonna see what this Amiga looks like before I give it some power we have the keyboard here We're just gonna unplug it. Man, different approach. I'm just gonna leave it as it is and I'm gonna give it some power and I'm gonna see what's going on. Okay? Do not do it like this, okay? Open everything and look, but I know they have been working on this. So let's see what's gonna happen, okay? Three, two, one, power. We got green LED. The screen does get a sync. Now, I could, of course, you know, lift the camera and stuff like that, but I'm not gonna do that every time I uh, turn the Amiga on and off. That would be, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. So, okay. So we have a, we have sync. That's good, okay. If we had no video sync, then, it, yeah, some different stuff, but we have sync. So let's work from that. We have solid, green LED, it doesn't get half bright, it doesn't blink, and as you can see, the floppy drive does also try to... This can be something with the CA, I'm not sure, but let's see what's going on under the helmet. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> everything's just... There we go. Nice stuff. Whoa. <laughs> nice. A 
RAM expansion A501 user manual. Beautiful stuff. Now, the first thing you always do when you buy one of these, and it doesn't work, take off the expansion. Now, the Amiga 500s, revision 3, revision 5, revision 6A, and also the revision 8, they didn't come with Vacha battery. 8, a1, the Amiga 500 Plus, came with the Vacha battery, but these did not come with no battery, but the expansions, as you can see, all this green, bluish stuff, that's from the Vacha battery that the guys, Michael and his friends, has removed. As you can see, we have all the green stuff here and here, and probably some of the times through these RAM blocks, RAM expansions, you will get the green stuff, man, over here, and it looks... Yeah, the first thing you do is just removing this. The second... Okay. <laughs> well, I have found the first issue over here. <laughs> the 68,000 CPU is missing, guys. <laughs> so, without that CPU, we, <laughs> we can't boot this one up, okay? That's a given. So this looks like a revision 6A. Yes, it is. You can see not that many RAM chips, only four. It's Kickstar 3.1. It's the 80, 8372 Agnes. That's nice. So what we're going to do is actually, we are going to look at Retro Jingles, one of his boxes here. <laughs> And we are going to take one of these. I'm just going to make sure if it's the 68,000 or is it 68,010. This is the 68,000. Now, if you want to play WHD Lot games, if you have a Keeper 2K expansion here, then you can actually put in the 68,010 and, um, and you can and you have more instructions on the O10 version, so you can press on F10 to quit and stuff like that. You know what I mean, guys. So, the notch has to be down here. Can you see it on the camera? Yes, you can, down here. So we'll have to turn it this way and install. And when you install it, look at the legs that they are not bent like this. Yeah, that's right. So we are just going to make sure this notch is uh, downwards and carefully install it. There we go. Nice. Okay, now we have the CPU installed. Let's just power it on and see what's going to happen on the screen. Power and black and green screen. Damn it. Now, <laughs> when getting a green screen, um, the thing you can do is actually start by, you can do two things. The first thing, uh, let's just turn it off. The first thing, you can take RAM block and piggyback it on top of these and see if they're dead, okay? That's the first thing. But I actually haven't had any issues with them Amiga 500 RAMs. Um, <clears throat> I've seen on Jan Beta's videos, he has issues with these, but uh, not, nothing personal here. Um, they're pretty nice, They I haven't had no issues. But I have had issues with the Fat Agnes and the socket and the legs that were bent and stuff like that. So the second thing you can do is actually buy one of these for one euro and pull out, just get a firm grip and pull it out easily, okay? That's the other thing when you have a green screen. It's something RAM related. But I'm also thinking about the CAA chips, guys, because of that disc loading stuff, blah, blah, I don't know. So what we're going to do is we're going to address the most common errors on these um, Amiga 500s. That's the 
odd CIA and even CIA. They're dead pretty, pretty often. So before we do anything, before we do anything, we are going to take this one down. No, we're not. We're going to take this one and we are going to find I think it's this. Yeah. We're going to find take this little IC. Now, on my Mega 4000 and 1200, I have these two diagrams that John has made. Thank you, John. And for the Mega 500, 600, 2000, I have got this. Now, every time I have issues with these Amigas, I use my diagram. So, the way we do that is actually we're just going to take off the... Oh my goodness! Kickstart 1.3. And as you can see, the notch is upwards, so it has to be the same way here. Let's just install that. So I think uh, Michael's friends, Michael, I think when they found out that they couldn't fix this one, they just took the 68,000 out and kept it. That's fair enough. Okay, so we are booting with the diagram and the diagram is gonna sh John, what is this? <laughs> Oh, whoa. I haven't seen this screen before, but it's really interesting because we have the grayish at the beginning and then the diagram will start reading. But um, have you guys seen anything like this before through the diagram? I have turned it yeah, upwards and the CPU downwards. Yeah, I have put it in the right way. Isn't that just odd? Odd CAA. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. No panic now. No panic. Never panic. <laughs> hmm. The MIA 500 can actually boot up without the even CIA. So what we're going to do before I take the fat actins out, we're going to address something else over here. We are going to remove this and we have three screws down at the bottom. And then we, oh, okay, the screws are, all screws are missing. So this disk drive is from June of 1991. <laughs> okay guys, so what we are going to do is actually we're going to remove this one and we're going to boot up with diagram again and see what's going on. Let's give it some power now. No, just try. And see what diagram is gonna do. It's gonna do exactly the same. Now. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're gonna pull out this um, CAA and we're gonna switch it with this one. Oh, wait. Guys, um, <laughs> it's not the correct ICs that are installed here, man. Oh no. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Two seconds, guys, I have to read. We have Denise, and Denise is turned the right way. We have 
I just installed the 68,000. I have installed the diagram. The Fed Agnes had the correct, absolutely correct number. Let me see the numbers at Paula Chip. Yeah, that's Paula. And she's turned the right way. And Gary. Yeah. And yeah, turned the right way. Okay. So, um, I can pick this up, but is it? No, you can't see it. But look at the legs, guys. They're bent outwards. This means when this CIA, yeah, 8528, 14th week of 1987. This one has been inserted with the top legs outside. That maybe explains why that screen looks like that. So we are going to carefully, carefully now. Yeah, it looks okay. Okay, a little more, two seconds. Guys. We are going to install this one now. We have to turn it. The notch has to be this way to, to my right. Let's see. Okay. All the legs are inside now. Okay. And we have diagram um, installed. The even CA is not installed. No disk drive. So we're going to boot up with diagram now and see if we will get the correct yes look at this yes 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 nice this is beautiful stuff guys beautiful stuff um, okay so what we are going to do with this diagram version 1.2 we are going to test IRQ and CA test IRQs. Nice. Test CAs. Now remember, we have only one of them inserted. So we're taking the odd now. I don't know what's, yeah. And even CA timing failed, that's because it's not inserted. Okay, so as you can see, the odd CIAs are okay, and the even <laughs> timing too fast fail. Okay, that's because I haven't installed it. Now, guys, I usually don't uh, make videos like this. So to my um, subscribers, if videos like this are boring, just let me know. I will never make them again okay <laughs> just a side note okay so what we're going to do now is we're gonna turn off the Amiga uh, we have a signal man now it, it boots with diagram all right but we're not guaranteed that it will boot with the kickstart ROM because diagram is gonna jump over some of the initialization in the beginning and stuff like that guys so it is not guaranteed that it that it will work. It, we can still have uh, RAM issues. I'm not sure if we can test the RAM, but I'm just gonna install this CIA. Wasn't that odd? All the on the odd CIA, all the legs were bent out. <laughs> it happens, man. It happens to the best of us. We have power again. We're going to make the test. Uh, diagram, green, okay, red failed. What does that mean, man? CPU 68,000, FPU none. Right, so memory test. Test detected chip RAM. Well, extend the chip RAM test. I don't know what that was. Test detected chip RAM, it didn't do anything. So as you can see here, it will take um, 
as you can see it has checked the first 63 kilobyte of memory uh, checked and usable 95 non-usable zero that's nice so if it will find some sort of problem then it will show it to us um, we're up at 191 kilobyte and, and as you all know the Amiga 500 came with 512 kilobyte of uh, chip RAM but this uh, Fat Agnes can actually handle more than that you can actually mod it to have one megabyte of chip RAM on the revision 6a so we're just gonna wait I hope that it goes up to um, 512 that means that we will have no RAM issues. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know how accurate this program is. Don't know, but uh, we have to use what we have got. And John has made this beautiful stuff, man. Checking full chip map area until to... Oh, error detected. Address error detected. Wow, that's not good. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is actually, I have inserted these, oh wait, wait, I should check the um, the even CIA also. <laughs> Turn it off too quickly there. Let's just check that one also and see what it says, okay. Now you can buy this diagram. Many people sell, sell it on, uh, on eBay, just go in there, just write diagram and you can buy. Everything it, it it costs nothing, man. So cheap. It's just a CIA chip. CIA. Now, that was odd, and now it's checking even CIA. This one. And odd and even CIA are all right. Beautiful, and it has detected five twelve. Now the next thing I will do is actually inserting this one and see what's gonna happen okay let's just go ahead pull this one out and see what's gonna happen I don't know if you can uh, get it but we have some Spanish music in the background that's outside <laughs> Somebody's having a party or something like that. <laughs> ah, we have a gray screen. <laughs> now it can... Beautiful. It can be easy... Uh, late boot because of... Because of it's missing the disk drive, guys. That's why. Oh, that was really high volume. That means I had some demos running in the background. <laughs> Now, what we're going to do now, guys, I mean, from a dead Amiga 500, I just, I just hope that the disk drive will work also, but let's just give it a go, guys. Okay. So let's just turn off the Amiga. I've changed my mind. <laughs> I'm gonna check it first. <laughs> I'm gonna check it first. I am going to check it first. install this one screw we had here like this and let's see what's gonna happen right all right bam now it will detect yes yes and it gives the ready signal 
Oh, I'm so sorry the camera was at the screen. You didn't see what I did down here. So sorry, guys. So let's just take this one. I love this disc. It has got X copy, reload kick, cross DOS, A64. Nice. This is just a multi disc. Let's just see. Oh. Greatness. <laughs> uh, look at this, guys. This is usually works. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to open this one and take a look inside. Yeah. So, so usually when I have a dead drive, oh, I can see it. When I have a dead drive, um, you can see it's pretty dusty inside, but the head is down there and up here. So you can take a Q-tip and you can actually clean it. Oh, I'm so sorry. You can clean it pretty easy. Let me see if I have a Q-tip here in all my uh, Amiga stuff in here. <laughs> yes, I have. Yes, I have. All right, guys. So we're just going to give this one some, some juice. And then I have an open window when you do stuff like this. But we're just gonna clean the head. I have made details, detailed video about this. So if you just write re retro Django, clean Amiga disk drive, Amiga floppy drive. I'm just gonna, yeah. Then you can see this in details. As you can see, it's, <laughs> I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but look at this guys, it is dusty. And you know what? We are going to give it one little drop of oil and then That's enough. All right. <laughs> now, actually, the head is cleaned. The uh, stepping motor, I just cleaned the top and I gave it just a drop of oil. And we are, I have no cuts in the video, no nothing like that. So you can see everything is just filmed, repaired, made while filming. So, no cheating, <laughs> you can see everything. Um, let's see what's gonna happen now. There we go. And there we go. Let's just tighten this little screw here. Now we have only 512 kilobytes of RAM again, so, but I have my trusty old Turkin one. This one runs at 510. Something's wrong. What did I do wrong? Something's wrong, guys. Let's try it again. Oh, <laughs> okay. There we go. Good. It's giving the tick signal. Cross your fingers. I just uh, make a turbo clean here of the drive. So let's see what's gonna happen. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh man, 
you know what listen to the drive it's so nice we're just gonna take uh, we're gonna install this one as you can see it, it has got some juice on it but I'm just gonna install it and see what's gonna happen okay but um, let's just go ahead and see if this one loads isn't that just amazing guys come on how long time did we film let me see 30 minutes and we have a beautiful Mega 500 <laughs> Welcome to Turrican! <laughs> nice stuff, man! I love this. It's just an adventure every time. So, as I said earlier, I hate to just disassemble everything and sell it off in parts. I love to save them. Absolutely. We have stereo sound. We have crystal clear picture. We have a beautiful... beautiful Oh, it sounds so well. Everything runs so smooth, guys. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to push our lock now. We're going to install this without cleaning it, without neutralizing it. We're just going to give this one some power. And we are going to... Oh, I love this um, cleaning disc. Look at this, man, back in the 90s. They did use this disc nine times, <laughs> 15 times. That's the maximum. <laughs> so what I'm used to do is actually, I just give this some ISO and put it in there and it will actually clean pretty nice. All right. So we're going to, um, we're going to use this test disc and we are going to take all, take the camera up and we're going to press on um, video rgb nice um, audio <laughs> all four channels memory it detected the slow man ram we have got one mix of ram isn't that just beautiful nice stuff man so what we're going to do now, we're going to take another disc, Switchblade 2, plug it in there. I'm not sure if it's a one megabyte game, but let's just load it and see. But it, it detected the one megs of RAM, so that's nice. <laughs> Parasol Stars is, um, I think it's still quite short also. It loads, it loads. No, I have, I don't have games on this one. Magic Workbench, Workbench 3.0. Oh, look at this, guys. One of my favorite games on my Commodore 64. Dragon Breed. <laughs> nice stuff. Okay. Isn't it just beautiful, incredible? Yeah, you did. You're dead, honey. We have the, let me see over here. It blinks, it lights up, it loads and everything. Oh, this is the diagram. Let's just put this one in here. There we go. Now this is for Amiga 500, 600, 2000. You can just, if you have revision six or eight, you can just put out the old one and put in this one. It, it works fine. That's beautiful, man. And the drive loads fine. As you can see, the keyboard, the caps lock, everything is just beautiful stuff, man. Um, it was a bit dirty, but it is what it is, guys right <laughs> okay so we filmed for 
about 35 minutes now and try some different stuff. Now the Amiga 500, the Amiga 2000 came with these hole through. Oh, it has been recapped as I can see up here maybe. They, they're usually blue and much bigger than these, but I don't know. But these hole through caps on the Amiga 500s, they're just still after 30 years, I have never had no issues. Amiga 1200s can have issues. Amiga 600s, they're just all dead. Okay, so recap them ASAP. But on these, I have had no headache, man. So Vata battery on the, uh, what's it called? On the RAM expansion. But other than that, wow, man, what a great, great computer. I'm happy with the results and um, it works fine. So I hope you enjoyed watching this repair video. Um, maybe you learned something that would make me happy. But this is usually my kind of approach. I don't panic. I just, oh, is that an issue? Okay, let's just check over here, over here. And through time, you will just get more and more advanced into this. So, uh, yeah, now I have an Amiga 500 that works. Mikai, min ven, den her maskine, den får du bare tilbage igen. Så så kan dig og dine venner hygge dig med den. I skriver bare til mig. Uh, Alright guys, I just wish you all a great, great day. Until next time, I hope you will subscribe and check out some of my other videos. Have a nice day out there guys. Retro Django, out.